this mission to, to ski and climb Denali. And yeah, I was definitely like pretty nervous going in, you know, hearing about Denali, like it's a serious mountain, extreme cold. There's always a chance of gnarly storms that don't leave. I'm a skier, that's what I do. But the big unknown was climbing Denali. What's that gonna be like? It's been one of those things, this trip, coming to Denali, Conrad's like, oh man, I gotta get you out to Denali. And at least like five years ago is when he first started talking about it. We've always seen each other. We're like, let's, we've gotta go do something. Let's do Denali and let's bring together this the new school talent that we got here. Yeah, sounds sweet. And I'd be like, oh, I hope he never calls me. I can't go with you on a trip, but he presented it in a way that was like, no, look, I'll help you, like, getting up the mountain and you'll be jibbing at 14,000 feet. And I'm just laughing at him like, no way, dude. Talked to a few other people and was like, got a couple other people on board. What really drew me to the trip is, is the posse. All scopes of, like, the North Face team from Conrad, who's, you know, legendary climber who's been on North Face for, like, 25 years, to Lucas, who's just been on the team for a couple years. Mm -hmm. The basis of the trip was kind of like a mentoring project. I feel like I need to step it up. There's nothing more frustrating to me than being the slacking end of a group, you know? Zellers has been who I've looked to being the other snowboarder. The fact that he came here as the first ever snowboarder to come snowboard this mountain is huge. Sage and Lucas are really dying to get into the big mountains. So we're up here to show them what the real deal is. It is a totally different mountain. What do you think, Sage? What the f are we doing? Oh boy, like this is really happening now. Like, uh-oh, what am I getting into? This is the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. snow and water. Never a little scared of the stove. Haven't really dabbled in it so far. It's too late. We're now. You didn't pump it enough. Yeah, you didn't pump it enough. Situation is, I've been taught once, like three years ago, how to start this MSR stove. Warm. Sage and Lucas come from a totally different skiing and snowboarding background. Sage has obviously been killing it and free skiing for so long and is just charging huge lines but accessed by helicopter. When you go on a, an expedition, a big trip like this, first of all, you're all under your own power, pushing yourself physically. You know, the first time we basically moved, it was like an 11 hour mission overnight through a glacier, gained like 4,000 vert. It's been five days of climbing and we made it to the bottom. In my experience knowing Sage, he's going to do it his own way. He's going to take a creative approach. He's maybe the dark horse. He doesn't let on that he knows exactly what's going on. I mean, your experience you usually draw from what you know, and I've definitely drawn a lot of parallels. It's a Burning Man, my greatest expedition preparation. Burning Man having it be dust storms and harsh weather and cold nights, and it's radical self-reliance. I really feel thankful for all the training I've had in that realm. Here we go. So Lucas Tabari is from Mount Baker, Mount Baker Hardcourse. I got a snowboard for Christmas when I was four, and I've been snowboarding ever since. As they come into the sport, somebody new, you can tell pretty quick if they've got it or not. You know, is one of the top snowboarders in the free ride world right now. And it's really good and refreshing to be around people, especially in the youth that aren't caught up in just the freestyle world. And I really relate. He's riding like spines in Alaska and then the NAR, and, and he's like, you know, this younger generation. Big Alaska style snowboarding. That's, I mean, that's where I want to go with it. What he will have from this training, very young in his career, will be great. And you see how it kicks back? A lot. So that's the true angle to the hill. Wow. 
I've actually never even thought of that, but that makes sense because it changes your yeah. from this to this, yeah. But when you do that to a run you're gonna do and it doesn't kick back, then you know you're screwed. <laughs> He's the subby dude, he's the young dude, he's the water boy, and that's the way it is on our little tribe expedition, but I was that place. It's part of this mentorship and team type thing. Team leader Conrad's like pushed to make everyone, you know, just push a little more than you want to. And my concern is pushing it too hard and getting some altitude sickness. This is the highest I've ever been in my life. Like, there's no way I'm the summit, like, I'm not doing it. I keep waiting for it to pop blue and for us to go make some runs, and sure enough. So we just kind of zigged up, snow looked good, and climbed up there, and uh, turned out there was some good snow, and we found some jumps, too, and pretty hilarious. Woo! <laughs> a crevasse gap, a cool, like, Serac feature takeoff. Coming here for 25 years, so I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> Didn't think it would happen, but snow is good, and we found a jump. Man, what kind of trick was that? It's called a flat spin because it's like a modified backflip. The wise man was right. His uh, vision of jibbing of tricks wasn't too far off. Crevasse feature. He does a backflip, and he lands it smoothly in touring gear with an expedition backpack on. What's up? <laughs> we can just look at the mountain as a bigger playground and see what these guys want to want to hit. I, I like that. So it's not about what you are doing, but it's about the style, how you are doing something, from my point of view. Big shag, beard. Oh, yeah. We did a little bit of acclimating, but the real accomplishment today was pouring a five foot block, kind of a canvas, to start a carving. All right, <laughs> they need our help. Uh -oh. They need our help. The crew in this expedition is making it unique. How's everyone feeling? Yeah. Solid? Yeah. I would have chickened out if it wasn't for the team that's here. Herding cats to get them all in one place, and everybody showed up. It's, it's unbelievable. One, two, three. It's just loving it. He's really taken to this sort of expedition lifestyle. Two hundred feet out of camp, anybody that said, "I don't think we should do this," everyone wanted to say, "Okay, let's go back to bed." <laughs> We've been pushing for twenty-eight hundred feet beyond that. That's pretty. It's hilarious. I can't understand why we like this. Right now, we're kind of at that spot where people are on different programs. It's a lot of timing to juggle. We're doing a group push towards the summit. And the weather's bad and we're hitting this, like, panic button. Oh, shit, what do we do? I really think you guys need to sleep at 17. Breaking down half of 14 camp and moving up to 17 for the night to try to push for the summit tomorrow. Dear brain, please let me forget the next 72 hours. Just beat down. Whole new world here. It's pretty intense. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> I feel weird. On the edge. I'm exhausted. Should have done a little more training. Let's get the whole cruise motoring up and digging deep. Ooh. Kind of a gnarly day. There was multiple points where it was like we were, had group like meetings on like a snowy, windy ridge of like, I don't know, should we turn around? Like these people are going back down. They said there's an avalanche. We're now made it to 17 from 14. Let's see. 
stage at 17,000 feet. He looks like he's ready to shred. <laughs> ready to shred bed. Uh. Here we are, uh, 17 camp, headed out in the morning and making a push for the summit. I feel like a 60-year-old chain smoker. I traverse across that gnarly face. Seems to me like a little bit of avalanche hazard, but maybe it'll, hopefully it'll shed. I can show you how to climb on the fly and you can show me a flat spin maybe at 19,000. It can't be any longer than like four arms length. I can't even see that carabiner, thanks for that. Frozen solid. Is this like the only time I'm ever showing Sage anything? for everybody to suffer a little bit. That is to the point of being comical. There's a dribble of piss running down my leg. I'm feeling kind of funny in the head. 17,000 feet before I'm gonna go to bed. The powder snow is what I'm gonna shred. Elevation, your mind is just shot. You'll feel better in a little bit, Dubai. No, maybe, I don't know. Never had to try that hard to accomplish anything before. Especially on this trip, when it was about the descent, when it came time for the downhill, you saw Lucas and Sage stepping up and filling their little, like, clicking into their roles side by side with these really experienced people and everybody working as a team. When we skied the rescue gully, it was cool because you wake up at 17,000 foot camp after summoning the day before, and literally you click in your skis and you're right there. It was something that Sage had looked at, like he does. I've never heard Sage be like, it's sketchy, people should definitely think about whether they want to do this or not. So he dropped in, and then Lucas went next. We're on the radio giving everybody beta, telling people exactly how to ski it. It was like, all right, he has stepped into this place where he's thinking about it as a team and being the team leader on this descent. And his ability to pick the route down has been beneficial to all of us. The mentoring is really going both ways, and it's super refreshing. <laughs> super thankful to be here with everybody, and uh, I'm definitely glad that uh, to make it up there. <laughs> to have the opportunity, the resources at my disposal to be able to come out here with the people that have the kind of experience they do, it's, it's unreal. <laughs> unlimited world of adventure out there. I'm really excited to kind of tap into that. Ready for inspection, sir. What in the hell? 
guys can go up in the mountain like this. This is a veritable gong show. Seriously? Over this. 